What's up? So, well, fixes. That's not gonna work, is it? And this part comes undone all the time, so if I become lower in the video than I do at the beginning, uh, that's why. Don't get mad at me, I'm not getting shorter. Now it looks somewhat like a couch. Now this looks like a casting couch. I gotta fix this. Damn it, porn. Dead channel. It will be coming back, hopefully, if I can get around doing some more of these review videos and have some free time. But I do this one for fun. These reviews will more likely be not overviews as much as they are real reviews because I only want to review used parts. I don't think the person who's reviewing it can get a full, complete idea of how the part feels and the really finer points of the part until they ridden it for a little bit, let it wear down, wear in, that kind of thing. So there won't be many overviews coming, hopefully a lot of reviews. Nothing that's wrong with overviews. Overviews are great when you know a product's coming out, you want to see it right then, all the specs, everything, in person, on video. So that's really great too, but it's not the video I want to make because I think there's a lack of actual reviews. First, let's go through the length. This length I have with me right here, and I've been writing for several months, is the 23 long by 5.3 wide deck. This is the transit deck. Back when they first came out with this, I scooped it up right then, just had to have it. It was big. It's all I really wanted. And looks pretty strong. We'll get into that later. But we also have the wheel compatibility. Wheel compatibility is important. It can't fit 12 standard. There is just not enough space to drill a hole that big. It's a thin deck, that's why a lot of people like it. Thin decks are becoming more popular, starting with the Paramount. The feel is just really nice on that, so it makes sense that people would do it too. But the downside is it's only compatible with regular wheels and Radix wheels, which is nice. Radix has become pretty popular. Thinking about that myself. It has two different spacers that come with this, so which method it does it. Nothing fancy. Spacers don't fit into the sidewall or anything like that. Just normal spacers, you gotta fit them in there. But it won't take you too long. It's not that big of a deal. So, as for nose blunt space, you're getting a little under four inches. They call it four inches. It's fine. Totally get that. So plenty of lock-in, flat nose blunt space on this. Uh, it's only really a little bit angled in the corner, so it's almost completely flat across. I really wanted to make this accurate for you guys, but I didn't have any headset bearings to stuff on in here to get a precise measurement. So it's looking from the middle of the axle hole to the bottom of where you're actually touching the one space right here. It's about three and a half inches. That is less than average. I've never measured another deck exactly like that before, so I don't have that comparison to, but I've ridden this deck and several other decks, and this deck has really less one space from the actual deck to the wheel than most other decks. There are very few other decks that have less. Some people like that, some people don't. It's all for opinion. For sliding along ledges, you probably want something a little bit skinnier because you don't want to go past the actual angle iron where it's waxed because then it'll catch and it'll fall, of course. But for stalls, if you're really trying to learn more, more of a beginner, probably you want more space. It's a little bit better for that just because you can have more space to lock in and not miss it. Fall over, which is worse than falling just onto your deck. But either way, it's not that much fun. One way it just looks stupid, the other way it feels 
bad, I guess is a layman's term for explaining it. I will say the head tube is longer a little bit than a TSI. I don't have a TSI. Because I just moved to Colorado. I had to leave most of my decks back home because I just moved what's fit in my car. But let's measure this fork tube length to show you. Fork tube comes in from top to bottom of the cups at about four and one eighths inches. Four and one eighths, I should say a little bit bigger than average, but sometimes it's good, sometimes that's bad, all depends on your fork. You might need some spacers, you might not. To help me figure out the flip room, I might as well just put on the original brake. This is not the original break. I'll be right back. Pretty good thing. Alright. This is the original break. But this one has welded nuts to it. So if you strip one, I mean, you could probably put another one on after it. They aren't very big nuts. But. On a casting couch, I just, oh god. But yeah, this is a little bit more of a complicated flex break than the Aztec one that I just accidentally pulled out. It's a little bit curved, so it won't square your wheel. It's only, it's not the full slit. I prefer a full slit, and I just use my own nut. But this works a certain method too. It's more of a uh, foot stopper, I think. It's better for that. I did forget to mention earlier that the reason the brake is that the lens is fine. The reason the brake is that way is with the V1, there is no cutout in the bottom of the deck for any brake holes. So if those bolts are not welded on, getting some nuts on there is a bitch. Is that right? No, it's not. If those nuts are not welded on. Getting those bolts on there are a bitch. It has about 15 and a half inches of foot space. Not as much as you expect for 23, but this will, these wheels do come in a lot. And I'll show you on this assumed in portion later. But the head tube doesn't go all the way to the end of the, end of the deck, front of the deck, sorry. So it's going to push in even more from back, as well as the long wells. That also contributes to less blunt space, which we already talked about, but you might like it, you might not. We'll see. Either way, it extends out to 23, so you've got your feet all the way back here. For the actual grind width and the contact space when you're doing board slides, uh, sideways grinds, that kind of thing, it's the exact same on the as the bottom. So 5.3 on top, 5.3 on the bottom. So 5.3 is a lot. It's not the most you can get right now. I think that would be the Urban Art Scooter Brand 6 wide and the normal 6 wide. It isn't a fully flat deck. It's almost fully flat. I'm not 100% sure why they didn't make it a fully flat deck. I feel like a lot of the reasons people like the siren, fountain, that kind of thing, have this channel in the middle, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but these welds are in that channel, and when you grind, it will protect those welds. So the structure of the head tube isn't going to be discounted from grinding. But with the transit, the welds are not in the channel. They're right outside of the channel because of the wide set stance of the head tube. And this means you grind right on. Not sure why that is. Don't know why they wouldn't make it fully flat when they did that. I'm sure they had their reasons for doing this. I just don't know what they are. Deck thickness. Let me show you. This deck is a thin deck. I like that. It can be harder to make it strong, but it provides better feel when you grind it. 
There are many thin decks out there, there should be more. Three quarters of an inch wide. To compare that, I guess I'll go measure my siren for you. It's about an inch. Yeah, full inch. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. I don't know, I have to ask Aztec. I don't have their exact numbers. But an inch versus three quarters of an inch makes a fair difference when you come to the field of deck. Do you think the casting couch was just like secretly Harvey Weinstein behind the camera? The inserts for the North Transit are different, a little bit different from any other inserts that you'll find. Well, most inserts are either just little squares that insert into just a square back to grind on, and that just keeps the square back from bending in. Most of just boxers is the best example, I'd say. There's like the drone icon, that kind of thing. But everyone knows about cutter, so we'll just stick with that one. Totally square, just a rectangle slid into the back of the square deck. Other decks like the Siren, the Space Deck, they'll round out the back so that when you're grinding, it's not as catchy and you can, it's a little bit softer, I guess is the best way to explain it. Space uses kind of pegs that are made to fit into the back. Siren uses inserts that are really rectangles and rounded on one side. The North is different from both of those in that it's a square that is rounded on both sides and sticks actually out of the back of the deck. And this, some people call it a cheaper solution to making like perfect pegs that fit in just so, or the siren where it's just rounded at one end, but it's really thick. I also forgot to mention that these type of plugs will hold themselves in place since they have lips that hold them on the back of the deck whenever you tighten everything together, which is a very useful feature. This is, I think, the most aesthetically pleasing version of rear dropouts, dropout inserts. Especially because of gold. The gold just looks fantastic. I love it. If I had the June bug, it would look even better, but nothing's wrong with raw. Apparently, stopped making raw for the B1.5 slash B2. But they should keep making it. Though their colors are pretty cool. Their actual functionality? Average. I wouldn't say they're fantastic. They hold your bolt. That's important for any dropouts nowadays. If they aren't holding your bolt, what are they doing? Your nut. They were originally made so that when one side wore down, the you could just flip them to the other side, flip them 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and then you'd have brand new spacers, inserts to ride on. When you do flip them back around, they have a lip to them so that anything remotely not smooth they're gonna catch on until they wear down again. Spots where you actually put in the nuts and bolts, those are very thin walled on each side. So those will bend in eventually, and you're gonna to have to bend those back out with some locking pliers or something like that to be able to get those out again, to change your wheel, tighten it, well, but you can keep it tight. But to take it out at all, you're gonna to need to bend those out every time, probably. Not a huge deal, something you see in a lot of decks now. Especially Paramount, so, oh, God. If you don't have those inserts, and even sometimes if you do have those little sketchy inserts, they'll bend in. It's not a fun time getting them back out. These ones, not so bad. Though apparently the V2s are a little bit thicker. I don't know about the sidewall. Don't know how they're gonna make that thicker. But they do stick out more this way. Up, or back, or front, or down, or southwest, wherever you're pointing your deck. Lack of concave. There isn't concave on this deck. Apparently, originally, it was a manufacturing error, but with the new decks, they just kept it with no concave because people were liking it. I understand it. I prefer a deck with concave, but I don't mind it too much not having concave. Only real downside is that when you catch your whips, you can't tell exactly where you're catching it on the deck. It can be a little annoying sometimes until you really land, then you can figure it out, obviously. But a little bit of a concave gives you a better feel for your feet, I think, of where the deck is in the physical universe. The extrusion? I'll show that to you, obviously, from behind. It's the best way you can get a view of how the extrusion is made, the shape of it, give you an idea of the strength you're looking at, but not obviously the total strength. A lot of strength comes from your welds up here, how it's jointed to the deck. 
The middle walls are very thick. Very, very thick. Thickest internal walls I've ever seen on a deck. And then there's another one in the middle, and of course the side wall at the side. But these two are very thin. Apparently I thought the ones in the middle would be the most important for structural rigidity. Most people just go with four walls though. They don't usually have an idea for the middle one. I'm not sure what their thinking was behind that. I could definitely see how that could help the strength, but the con is that this deck does not flex as much as Paramount. Paramount certainly flexes more, it's a little bit more comfy for landings. This feels hard. If you like flex, maybe look elsewhere. This is about average, which is surprising for how thin it is, but when it comes to grinds, that's when you really notice the thickness. Maybe some people will disagree with me on that, because it's really all a feel thing. It's hard to prove how much a deck actually flexes. On OutsetSelect.com, it says this is a four pound deck. Specific about ounces, I doubt it's exactly four pounds. The new Siren V2 is light. This is not a heavy deck, but it's not light either. If you're not throwing bribe, front bribe, buttercup things, this deck's gonna be great for street riders. Definitely a fan. You will not like it unless you need concave, really. Actual grind space you have for ice picks on your dropouts, it goes all the way to the end. That's something along the lines of a little over two and a half inches. The aluminum type for the V1 is different from the V2. That's V1.5. Who knows what's going on there. The title for the vaults from v overview says V2, and Steenson says in the video it's actually the V115, and they're still changing the transit around, so who knows what you'll see in the future. So the V1 is 7075 aluminum. It's a bigger number, right? You think it'd be better. But apparently they had some issues. This deck itself has some cracks right here at the base of the welds. Um, that which is surprising, I don't ride very hard much anymore. Got some bad joints and I don't like to make them worse. So I was expecting this last years. It lasted me about eight months before I started seeing these cracks, which is plenty of time for a deck, but not enough time for how hard I ride. So there were people breaking them in a month, two months, I even heard a couple people breaking them in a few weeks, so those could have been just dud decks. You know, there are always going to be a few of those, that's why they have the warranties. But the V1.5, it's actually good, is 6061 T6 aluminum, which is aluminum type that you hear about being used more in scootering. And T6 is heat treated, heat treating is important. There's certainly, it's certainly a great way to make a deck stronger. It just aligns the magic in a deck so that they're lined up properly instead of all over the place. And so they join together better. I guess it's not random aluminum, it's structural. This is a 3D forged and CNC head tube. It's really just forged and then they CNC it to give it this cool look, you know, on all the channels, that little hole in the middle, that kind of thing. But there's no weld up here that's important for strength. And the head tube itself looks pretty solid. If we were going to break on the head tube itself instead of the deck, sometime I would think it'd be right here at the bottom with this reinforcement in the middle. Just because that seems where it's the least of the material, but I'm not an engineer. It looks pretty strong, even if it weren't to break right here, so it would last a while. I'm thinking the V2 will be pretty strong. Not too much else to say about this deck. Really just the aesthetics itself are enough to be interested in this deck, at least. The head tube is one of my favorite looking head tubes in the game. Some people say it's off attic, but a lot of companies have head tubes with like one hole, one hole right here. It's just a normal thing to do now. You have to make it slightly different, which it is. And they also have this 
reinforcement in the middle, which not only makes it stronger, but really adds a really cool look to the deck. It kind of ties everything together in one line, just starting with this little hole in the middle. It's very nice. I like it. In conclusion about this deck, North is a good company. This is a good deck. The V1 was a good deck. The V1.5 and V2 seem like they'll be great decks. I really believe that. It won't be decks for everyone. They're not most well-rounded decks. They're, they're a little bit heavy. They're certainly geared towards grinds. Not so much towards the uh, in-air balance. So those, it's not bad. You can do plenty of whips and that kind of thing with it. But it's just not exactly what it's made for. It's certainly a street-oriented deck, this thing. So North, doing well. Doing well despite a little bit hiccup in the manufacturing. Doing well. And if you're a big old street rider, or even an average street rider who likes slightly bigger decks, come in a 22 inch version and 23 inch version. They used to make an extruded version that came in 21, I don't think that comes out anymore. They might have a 21 inch version of the non, uh, what's the word? Non signatures. But I don't know if they make 20 inch, 21 inches anymore. I'm not sure if they sold super well. I wanted a big deck back then, and that included the length as well as something. So it might just be 22 and 23 now. If you're a street rider who likes big decks, you love 50s, that kind of thing, this is a fantastic deck for that. I'm not gonna lie. I was a fan of this deck, I'm not disappointed in the purchase at all. The pricing is average. It's not a TSI pricing. TSIs are very expensive just because they're made in America and American manufacturing is more expensive than Chinese manufacturing, which I believe this year Chinese made deck as almost every deck is now. And all this has been. Other than TSI. TSI is really the only company I know that doesn't make their decks in China. Which isn't always a bad thing. Chinese people need to feed their families and make money too and learn math. And if that's something you need, you can really only go with TSI. But you're looking at something like $270 for a deck, maybe a bit less for a pair amount. Vox Cutter, I believe, is something like $270 around there. At that point, this is a $200 deck. So you're saving 70 bucks right off the bat getting this deck, and you might be happier with it. Just because of where it's built doesn't mean it's going to be better, though TSI does have a much longer track record of making good decks. And they've always made good decks. Well, besides the uh, flight deck, we don't talk about that. So, North Spears. Not a company with a ton of clout, but they've built a good following in the recent couple of years that they've been around. But you seem to be pretty involved in the actual production of the parts. And that's always important to make the company, if it's not right around, at least most likely right around company as possible. I bought this deck when it originally came out. It was the biggest deck you could buy in the industry. 5.3 wide by 23. I think there was only one of the deck going wider than 5 at the time, and it was only 5.1. 5.1, pretty much the same as 5. I was riding a very old TSI sledge at the time. The V1, they didn't even have the square dropouts yet. So I was really excited to get the square dropouts. Never had that before. And I was not just playing with this deck. The weight took some getting used to. The lack of flex was different. Of course, no concave is different weight being used to, but you get used to it fast. I think it was about a month later, we started seeing ads for the Aztec Siren and if I had known that would be coming out soon, I would have waited for that just because I was looking for size as my main point of purchase. Also, this first deck to be equally wide on the top and the bottom without having any of the uh, edging, I guess you could call it beveling at the bottom. The paramount is completely rounded at the bottom on the edges, which is, I don't like that. It's not great. Can't really tell when you're really locked in for 50s or anything like that. Or board slides. You can't really tell when you're just falling off. It's not, I don't like it. Some people do. All opinion. 
sledges and really most other decks had kind of flat 45 degree angle the wall. The reason people do this is for rough ledges. Rough concrete ledges specifically, they're gnar, they're all gnarled, they're not smooth. So if you have something with a sharp edge, it's going to dig right into any gnarled surface and it's going to stop. So if you have kind of an angle there, it can kind of just slide over it. And with every company's first real deck, there's going to be some issues. Almost every company. Some companies will get lucky, get a really good factory making it straight off the bat. But most, you're going to have some issues. If you remember the District B1, that was crazy weak. But the District B2... <sighs> Atlas deck is coming out soon if you like thicker decks with concave. We'll have that. It'll be a little bit heavier than some of the other decks in that size category, but it'll also be lighter than other decks that are smaller than it, like the Jersey Carter stick, Lumpen and Shoe. Everything's getting bigger. Wheels are getting bigger. Forks are getting bigger to compensate for the wheels. Decks are getting bigger to compensate for the wheels, and because people want bigger decks. Bars are their own thing. Some people like them tall, some people like them short, some people like them wide, some people like them skinny. You know, it's all the motion of your ocean, the boat to my lotion. <sighs> I'm not sure if I'll be buying too many parts from them in the future, specifically for my scooter, but they're a good company making good parts, and I would not be disappointed with any product I have from them. You should buy it if you like it. And I hope you like this video. My Instagram name is underscore easy Ethan, easy with a Z. Like the uh, famous blues artist, Easy E. If there were any specs or anything else you guys wanted to know, just drop them in the comments below. Maybe I'll get to them in a reply sometime, maybe another video even. Other than that, just goodbye and thank you again for watching.